Okay, so now let's refresh our memories with trigonometric functions. Sine, cosine, and the tangent function. So remember that trigonometric functions, they are connected with geometry, they're connected with angles, and the first thing I want to do is I want to just ask the question, why are there 360 degrees in a full rotation? If one uses degree measure for an angle, then the first thing you learn is that there are 360 degrees in a full rotation, so a half a rotation is 180 degrees, so a quarter rotation is 90 degrees, and so on. Why 360? What's the significance of this number? Why aren't there 400 degrees in a full rotation? Why isn't there one degree in a full rotation? Why 360? It's sort of a bizarre number if you think about it. This dates back to the Babylonians. And this is about 2000 BC. So about 4,000 years ago. So why did the Babylonians use 360 degrees in a full rotation? Well, the reason is 360 is divisible by lots of integers. We can just list them here. What's it divisible by? It's divisible by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, 15, and it can keep going. It's divisible by lots of integers. So imagine you're in a society where Working with integers, no problem. Working with fractions, uh, then it gets a little bit more troublesome. So you kind of want to avoid working with fractions, working with rational numbers if you can. And so you would pick a full rotation to be some integer value for which you can talk about fractions of that rotation with still using integers. And 360 was sort of that happy medium. It wasn't too big, that it was unmanageable, but it was big enough that it was divisible by lots of integers. So if I wanted to divide it up into the, that full rotation up into 15 segments, well, that's no problem because 15 divided into 360 and left an integer value left over. Okay, so that's the reason. Now, for us, in this modern age, we don't really have that requirement that we need our numbers to be in some sense, nice, we need them to be integers to work with. So is there a better choice for angular measure rather than the degree? Is there a better choice for a unit of angular measure? Well, let's have a look. This is where radian measures come in. Radian measure is really about saying, so we've got a unit circle here. So this is a unit circle. That means the radius is 1. So one is a natural length associated with this circle. It's the distance from the center out to the circle itself. What if I started at that point and just wandered along the arc one unit? So I wander along the arc one unit as well. Then there's a very natural angle that comes up. It's this angle here. So let's just look at a dynamic figure. So again, I've got the circle of radius 1. You can see here that the radius is 1 unit because that's the same length as here to here. Now I take a unit length and I just start wrapping it along the circle's circumference. And that forms an angle. That angle is what we call one radian. So again, we all we've done is taken a very natural length of one unit, wrapped it along the circle, it forms an angle. That angle is what we're going to call one radian. So this is one radian. So let's jot this down. What did we do? We consider a segment of the perimeter of the unit circle of length 1. 
this defines a central angle which we define to be one radian. So that's the definition of a radian. Think about it this way. This is a nice way to think about it. An angle of measure one radian is the angle when you draw the arc subtended by that angle on the unit circle, it gives an arc of length one. So there's this direct relationship. The radian measure, the value of the radian measure is the same as the value of the length of the arc. So one radian gives an arc of length one. Two radians would give an arc of length two. Half a radian would give an arc of length a half. So you can directly go from the radian measure to the length of the arc subtended by that angle. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, that means that if I go half a rotation, how many radians is that? Well, the number of radians in half a rotation would be the length of the arc for half a rotation. And that's pi, because 2 pi is a circumference of the full circle, so half the circumference would be pi. So we get a direct result of pi radians is half a rotation. But we know half a rotation in terms of degrees is 180 degrees. So what that means is pi radians is 180 degrees, or in other words, one radian dividing both sides by pi is 180 over pi degrees. And so there's our conversion. We've defined this new unit of measure for angles, and we can see how it relates to our old one of degrees. One radian is 180 over pi degrees. Okay, so we use radians in calculus, radian measure in calculus. In fact, radian measure is almost exclusively used for angle measure in all of mathematics. We don't really use degrees very much. Um, the only time we'd use degrees is if we take our results and then we are to communicate the answer to someone and we make communicate it in a more friendly terms in terms of degrees. But all our calculations are generally involve radian measure. Why is that? We use radian measure in calculus because it's so much more natural. It's so much more natural. Again, 360 was only chosen because it was divisible by lots of integers. We could have chosen 720, and that's divisible by a lot more integers. In fact, it's divisible by another factor of two. But the problem is that number is getting big. So 360 is in some sense an arbitrary value. This radian measure is chosen in a very natural way. It's chosen by this natural length one and the relationship it has with the circle. So because radian measure natu is natural and more to the point is it makes our formulas simpler. So we use radian measure in calculus because it makes our formulas, our formulae, and in fact our calculations simpler. Sort of a basic reason why we would use it. Okay, so let's get some practice again with converting from degree to radian. I know you've probably all seen radian measure before. You've seen it in your previous classes. Again, let's just get through um, some refresher of radian measure and its connection with degrees so that we're all on the same page because we're going to exclusively use radian measure throughout this course. So sketch the following angles. They're all given in radians in standard position and give the measure of the angle in degrees. So what's pi by 2? So standard position means we measure from this positive x-axis in the counterclockwise direction pi by 2. What is that? So pi by 2 radians is equal to well, pi by 2 times 180 over pi degrees per radian is our conversion factor and so that gives us our result in degrees and so we see that it's 90 degrees. So pi by 2 radians is the same as 90 degrees so there is our line segment and there is our 
angle drawn in standard position as measured from the positive x-axis in the counterclockwise direction. What about pi by 4? Well, you can do the same conversion. You see that it's 45 degrees. You know, pi by 4 radians is equal to pi by 4 times 180 over pi degrees. And therefore, we see that that's 45 degrees. So it's here. But we should get more comfortable with using radian measure instead of always converting back to degrees. Radian measures should be how we start to think in terms of angles. So what's pi by 4? Well, that would be half of pi by 2. Pi by 2 is the right angle, so pi by 4 is half of that. That's how we can think about this. What about negative 5 pi by 6? Well, negative 5 pi by 6, I can think about this as, you know, I can think of it as negative 6 pi by 6 plus pi by 6, or in other words, it's negative pi plus pi by 6. So what does that mean? It means pi is a half a rotation, so it's a half a rotation in the clockwise direction. So that's negative pi, but I went too far. I need to come back pi by 6. So if I come back pi by 6, then I get what I want. My angle here is negative 5 pi by 6. And our last example, 13 pi by 3. Well, 13 pi by 3 is, think of it as 12 pi plus pi over 3, or it's 4 pi plus pi by 3. What's 4 pi? Well, 2 pi is a full rotation, so this is 2 rotations. So that's 2 pi, 4 pi, and then we go up another pi by 3. And so that's up to here. What's pi by 3? That's Pi by 3 is 60 degrees, so we go up another 60 degrees. So this was pi by 3, and this blue one here is 4 pi by 3. And so there's our terminal line segment marking the end of the angle. All right, so that's just some quick examples of thinking in terms of radian measure and how to plot the angle.